What's the deal, y'all? It's your boy Big Star Raw Sports here with another classic episode of Legends Week, man. We are uh, midway through the week. Uh, thank y'all for, you know, continuing to tune in, man. Thank y'all for, you know, um, continuing to just, you know, be as excited as I am for Legends Week, man. Tonight, we got a, a major treat, man. One of, you know, what up, Nye? Big the Boogie Nye. Um, one of uh, Philadelphia's greatest of all time. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about some of the greatest of all time, you know, ballers, you know, in Pennsylvania in general, um, high school, you know, Philadelphia area, this and that. Um, Marvin O'Connor, man, hands down one of the best. His resume is just like ridiculous, man. Um, you know, Simon Gratz, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he played at Villanova. Then he, you know, declaimed to fame and, you know, where he, you know, really, really blew up on the college scene was, um, you know, at St. Joe's. Um, I mean, he had a, an amazing career at St. Joe's, you know, played with some other legends, you know, Jameer Nelson being one. Um, and, you know, uh, just, just, just an insane career, man. So, um, I appreciate everybody tuned in, man. Um, yeah, I, I guarantee you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, and you're, de you're definitely in for a treat. Um, I heard Marv, you know, speak on several other occasions, and um, you know, just like all the other legends, you know, he's a he's a great. He seems to be a great storyteller. Um, so it's definitely going to go down, man. So as soon as I get my man uh, Marv O'Connor on here, man, it's definitely going to go down. And um, y'all already know the format. Um, you know, toward the end, the uh, you know at the end of the broadcast, we're going to have a nice little Q and A with Marv. Let you guys go back and forth, ask him some questions. Um, so that's pretty much that, man. Um, it's going to wait for my man Marv to jump on here. We're going to get it going. Legends Week, midway through the week. Um, if anybody has any questions um, right now, y'all can start typing them now or, um, you know, whatever the situation is. Uh, we don't actually have to wait till the end of the broadcast, but, um, you know, start throwing your questions at me now and I'll, you know, start writing them down if, you know, if, if I can. And also, um, if anybody's, if you, if you guys have been missing any of the um, Legends Week episodes, um, you know, what I do is I'll, you know, once I save them, uh, I upload them to my YouTube channel. Um, Raw Sports uh, Films uh, is the YouTube channel. You can see all the past episodes there. And as soon as I upload them there, that's when you'll see me, you know, deleting them from um, from my Instagram, you know, little profile here. Um, but Raw Sports Films on YouTube is where you can see all the past episodes of Legends Week. And um, also my website as well, rawsports.tv. Boogie Nye, 10 random questions. I got you, big dog. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, also, man, something else that we can do fun um, in a way of interaction. Um, if it's any, um, any, anybody that you guys would like to see on Legends Week, um, anybody that I have not um, brought on the show yet, um, any, any legends that you guys are definitely aware of, um, send me a message. You know, put them, you know, type in the, in the uh, you know, feel free to you know, type them in the comment section now or send me a DM, you know, send me a message at any time. Um, if it's anybody that you guys are definitely aware of that's, you know, that qualifies as a hoop legend, you know, from the 90s and below or just, you know, any any era, any time period, um, definitely let me know, man. I have a, a long list of legends already on deck uh, to be a part of the show. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so many out there. And, you know, I, you know, I, I, I miss, you know, I definitely miss some um, in my search. So if anybody's aware of any legends that you would like to see, um, you know, as a guest on Legends Week, you know, definitely let me know. Keep me posted and let me know. Let me see if I can get my guy Marv O'Connor on here. If I need to, um, I may have to exit this one out and um, give my man Marv a shout. Make sure we on deck for eight o'clock. Um, but either or, you know, it's definitely going to go down tonight for sure. Do I know Wooga? Yeah, I definitely know Wooga. And I seen Papa. I definitely know the young fella. Looking forward to his uh his senior season, man. His senior campaign is definitely gonna be crazy, man. For sure, for sure. For sure. All right, here we go. Got my man Marv O'Connor on. And if you guys see um Street Bangers, that's Marv O'Connor right there. Um so make sure y'all follow his page, man. He got a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on with his restaurant and everything, man. Um it's definitely, definitely going down, man. 
Chuck Moore, John Salmons, for sure, for sure. Definitely got them on deck. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, hold on, dog. <laughs> Damn. Hey, 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 hey. There he is. There he is. There he is. What's up, bro? What's up with it? I'm blessed. Ah, right, there we go. Now we cooking. Now we cooking. You already know. I'm you already know. I'm blessed. Good to have you, man. What's going on? Oh, man? oh man. You know, I'm in good hands with Allstate, man. <laughs> I'm just I'm just glad to be here, man. It's counting, counting every day is a blessing, man. I know that's right, man. Well, it's good to see you, man. It's just a blessing to be in your presence as always. Um, yes, I've, been look I've been looking forward to this, Mar, for years, you know, for the opportunity to be able to educate this younger generation on who Marvin O'Connor is and also right. to be able to solidify your legacy so people never forget what you did and, and never forget that. what you stand for, man. So this is a blessing, Appreciate man. Um, anything you want to mention before we get right into it? Nah, man, you know, just um, just feel free to go in, man, like, um, <clears throat> because, uh, you know, all information is good information, and it always going to help somebody in some way, shape, or form, so let's just get right to it. No doubt. All right, we're going to have some fun. Um, I got a little segment I call 10 Random Questions. I'm going to just ask you 10 random things just to kind of get us rolling, and then, uh, right. you know, then, then we're going to have... only gives us like an hour to kind of rock and, and then and then um you know, hour segments so if it gets you know if it starts to close on the first hour um i'm gonna just end this one and we'll just start a brand new one and just keep going got it all right and then at the very end of this i'm gonna just have a little q a let you interact with the people let the people shoot some questions off to you and um that's pretty much that and then when it comes you know time for you to tell your story i'm gonna just give you the freedom just to rap man and i'll just kind of you know interject some questions in between and then we're gonna have some fun like that oh that's good stuff all right, so first question, 10 random questions. Um, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? <laughs> Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Tom and Jerry? <laughs> no doubt. Um, everybody has a basketball claim to fame. Like me, you know, I'm a Norristown Eagle. You know, I graduated in 95. So my claim to fame that I would tell my sons is, you know, dad played against Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm saying, over at, over at uh, Plymouth White Marsh. So do you have, like, what, what's your... Of, of your journey, what's, what's your claim to fame? Something that you're really proud of, either somebody you played against or just something that you did? Bro, I'm going to be very honest, bro. Um, when you score 18 points in 59 seconds, that's beyond claim to fame. Um, that That's just something that, um, just being from Philadelphia, you got to be extremely proud that someone from your backyard was just able to uh, accomplish something so so crazy, almost like a video game. <laughs> um, so that's something that's going to always, always, when I'm dead and gone, they'll say, yeah, man, the boy scored 18 points and, 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 and it's documented and it's on tape and it's real. And it's real. <laughs> we're, go we're definitely going to talk more about that. Um, that was 18 points in 59 seconds versus LaSalle University. Right. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Guys, you guys, we're definitely going to talk more about that. Um, who was your, who was your, one of your favorite uh, NBA players, you know, coming up that you looked up to? Um, flat out, uh, Isaiah Thomas was my guy. And why was that? Um, I don't know if I got kind of connected to the way they played. Um, in that, in that round, that 89, 90, I was around 11. And uh, just how hard they played was something that intrigued me. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So, Go back to your era. You graduated. What year did you graduate? 90, 97. 97. Okay. So from your class of 97, um, you know, 96, 97, pick five from your class or from your era to go against any five from any era. Who, who, who would you pull in? Who would you pick? Um, for my class, I would have to get uh, Flip Murray. I would have to get Lynn Greer. I would have to get my backcourt mate, uh, JK and we uh I would go I would go Vic Thomas. I would go Vic Thomas in the middle. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I think we I think we um I mean just the guards alone will give people a lot of trouble. No doubt, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, now, now you have a restaurant, um, and we'll talk more about that. What's what's right. your favorite what's your what's your favorite on, on your menu? The Rasul Butler combo. 
um, it was which is a um, uh, 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 buffalo chicken cheesesteak with waffle fry combination. It, it's it's vicious, <laughs> and just to be able to uh, name it after um, somebody I grew up with, um, and was a staple in that community in the South Philly community, man, that, that lost his life. Um, I was just, just glad to be able to honor him in some way. Wow, that's amazing, man. I definitely got to get me a Russell Butler combo, man. For sure. <laughs> for sure. It's mean. It's mean, Star. For real. It's crazy. No doubt. Um, speaking of Philly, the tradition of Philly and legendary players, um, what's somebody that you looked up to? And you're and like, when you was on the come up in high school, what's some guys that were a little older than you? Some guys that you may have looked up to, guys you admired playing ball? Well, I'm going to go a little bit older, um, just merely because he's from the same housing project as myself. Uh, Pooh Richardson is a guy that came up in the same, you know, housing project. Um, and because of the age gap, I didn't really get a chance to spend a lot of time with him and things of that nature. But just because he's from my was from my hood, man, and McDonald's All American and UCLA and top ten pick, it just resume alone was a guy that you know what well, you got. You can you know follow his footsteps and and take some things from him. No doubt. Um, you like myself, um, you know, grew up, you know, in the 80s, you know, TV and all that kind of stuff. Everybody was watching wrestling. Who was one of your favorite wrestlers, whether it was NWA, WWF back in the day? You know what, bro? I was a, um, I was a Hulk Hogan guy until the Ultimate Warrior came into play. And I just was, just, I was all Ultimate Warrior ever since. No, but, no. you know, but that's later on. That was later on, but when you start talking about the earlier, because to me it had two phases of wrestling. You got the early, early, the junkyard dogs and them guys. When I was like my early years, you know, I'm seven, eight, and I really thought it was real. Yes. And right, and then you yeah, have a little older, and I just like you know the Million Dollar Man and, and the Ultimate War. That whole thing it was it was crazy, bro. <laughs> wrestling was something else, bro. <laughs> For sure. Um. Uh, the Rocky series, which one was your favorite if you have one? You know, against the Russian, against Mr. T, the Apollo Classics, Tommy Gunn, which one? Um, well, Rocky 1 is always going to be a classic. Um, but Rocky 4, um, it, to me, was the best with the Russian and, he, you know, killed Apollo and the main man came back and knocked him out. It, it was big time. For sure. Big time. For sure. Yes, sir. Um, what, what, uh, any nicknames? What nicknames did you have growing up? Um, I didn't have a whole lot of nicknames, but you know, because I have a, a strange last name for a black man, um, you know, they just, you know, a lot of people call me OC or MOC. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of went by that. No doubt. Um, last question. What's, um, I know you scored 18 points in 59 seconds, but overall, at any level, um, what's the most points you ever put up in, the, in, a, in, a, in a game? Like, I'm talking I'm, summer leagues, anything. I mean, I'm sure I got in the 60s somewhere um, a few times in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the summer leagues, um, kind of like when I was a little younger. Because, um, unfortunately, I, I wasn't really privy to um, – the, uh, the, 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 the Sunny Hills and some of the piles younger. Mm -hmm. um, so I played like the neighborhood and I played in a PHA league, which is all housing projects only. Um, and I was extremely local at that time. Got you, got you, got you. All right, well, I appreciate that, man. Just, you know, just a little tune up before we get into the stuff, man. So um, right now, man, just, um, just, just get comfortable, man, and, and just express yourself however you want to express yourself and tell your story. Um, I, I obviously have some questions, but I'm just, you know, I respect you so much, and I respect your story. Your voice. I just want to give you the freedom just to kind of tell your story how you want to tell it, and I don't want to interject. Um, but ju just start us off, man, by just letting us know, you know, just, just reintroduce yourself to the people and let us know where the Marvin O'Connor story begins. Uh, yeah, again, uh, Marvel Connor, man, South Philly guy, um, who, like I, like I said, star, I was, uh, I was just a neighborhood basketball guy for a very long period of time. Um, maybe until I was like 14 or 15, um, just played in the neighborhood and guys was like, yeah, like you really could play. Um, but I didn't have a, a, a quite natural name, uh, on a, a whole city scheme of things. Um. And what ended up happening is around, I'm going to say, maybe seventh grade year, I'm looking at high schools, and I'm saying, like, you know, I think I'm good. I'm a, I might want to try to go to one of the top high schools. And it's like, yo, bro, that's halfway across the city, bro. Like, you you all the way down in South Philly. Because I live about, bro, about four blocks 
to the right of the spectrum at that time. Oh, oh wow. So I was deep, I was deep down deep, in South Philly. Deep down in South Philly. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So they like, yeah, bro, you sure you want like go all the way up there? And I'm like, yeah, they give me a fresh start. You know, coming out of middle school, like I won't know nobody. I said, you know, I might want to try that. And, and so just curious, just, just curious, was were these your own thoughts and your own thing, or did you have like some people kind of working with you to help you, you know, put them, you yeah. know, make put those things together or what? Yeah, bro, just I just my own just my own thoughts. Actually, the newspaper helped me kind of, you know, just me looking at the newspaper in that year prior to prior to me actually going, you get grats is in the paper daily. I mean, they got a 31 and 0 season. Yes. They're top in the country. And I'm like, and I'm look, I'm this local guy from the housing project. Just think that I, I can play on that level. And gotcha. just at that at that point, it just it just was a vision. Uh -huh. You know, no real backing. Um, I'm, I'm a guy that never had um, uh, 40 and 50 guys around, no entourage. I just was a local cat who played hard, you know. And so what ended up happening was I got the acceptance. So, bro, I got a chance to go to Central. Um, I got a chance to go to uh, Bodine or some of the better high schools academically. Uh -huh. But I said, you know what? I'm going to chase this, this, this athletic thing, and I'm going to try grass. So I, I accepted the, the acceptance, and in 93, uh, September, I enrolled um, in grass. Got so – it gets even tricky from there because now I'm looking around. You got uh, Red Smith and Lenar Stewart and Terrell Stokes and these guys, and I'm looking at these guys. I don't know none of these people. Okay. I'm, I'm in a school with oh, 1,500 so you, so people. So when you say you wasn't really, you know, on the scene, like you wasn't on the scene, like you wasn't up hard nets and running around and, you know, getting to know all the players. You was in your area and just in your in your, area, in your neighborhood. It, it, bro, bro, super. When I mean local, I'm talking about a four-block radius. Wow. Do you hear me? I mean, um, I got some South Philly homies that, you know, like Tasker, like they was just only in Tasker and that was it. Right. And that, and I was one of them guys just in a different project. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so that landscape when you went to Gratz was all brand new, all those individuals. It was, it was, it was extremely new. I knew nobody. Um, so I, I, I quite naturally, I met, met all new people, you know, and which was a good thing because, like I said, it gave me a fresh start. Mm -hmm. But as far as um, from an athletic perspective, um, they said, listen, bro, um, you got to run cross country to even, you know, be a candidate. So I'm like, damn, there's something different. You know what I mean? But, I, but, I, but the thing is, is I want it. That's what I came here for. Gotcha. So I uh, ran cross country, and here come tryouts. Tryouts. Now, mind you, quite naturally, bro, I'm going to keep it I'm gonna keep it a being with you. You hear the, you hear the buzzing on who going to make the team, Who's this? And see, like a guy like Jared, who came in the same time I did, he already had kind of like the name. He's from North Philly. Mm -hmm. He's a big guard. They kind of already knew who he was. And I was a stranger, a complete stranger at the time. Wow. Yo, I did not know and, this, man. This is good, man. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So tryouts, bro, I, I came in there um, with, with, a, with a sense of focus like you probably nobody's ever seen before. So guys is looking around like, yo, who is this guy? Like this guy's going hard. Uh -huh. Who is this guy? And I started to make a little name for myself just off of tryouts. Like, yeah, this guy, this guy could play a little bit, you know. Um, athletic guy, he can shoot the ball. And um, like I said, my effort, I think my effort has always been like, like, you know, you know, people get like, yeah, the guy can shoot, he can score the ball at will, he can do this. But my effort, night in and night out, to me, always been like my pride and joy uh -huh. um, of playing the game. And but unfortunately, bro, I got cut. Wow. I'm talking about you couldn't tell me I didn't have the best tryout. <laughs> I'm up, you you couldn't tell me, but I got cut, and it humbled that, that me, bro. Nice. That was just to put in perspective. That was ninth grade. Correct. Okay. Correct. Wow. And, and it gave me a slice of humble pie. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, I for a split second, I thought about, you know, maybe I need to go back home. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm curious, looking. Yeah, well, just curious, what would have been your home school? If, if, South Philadelphia High. Yeah, South Philly High. South Philly High. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's our neighborhood school. Uh -huh. and, um, and when I didn't make it, and the guys from the area like, yeah, bro, you could have easily played varsity over here. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, I mean, it, it, you know, ran across my mind. So I can't lie to you. Like, yeah, I could be playing, but now I gotta play JV. Uh huh. But I'm playing JV for one of the best programs in the country. Yes. So yes. you got, you know what? I'm gonna hang in there. Yes. I'm gonna hang in there. Work my tail off, bro. All summer, I bro, I averaged like twenty five thirty in JV. I know <laughs> Mr. L was like. Hey man, this boy crazy, and um, because people in grads just don't score like that. We yes. always average fifteen, fourteen. We don't get twenty five. Uh huh. <laughs> and um, so I, I I did that. Uh, the summer league, the hey, whole hey, nine. Hey, 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 time out real quick. It, just, so that um, when you was playing JV, just wanna just wanna put in perspective for the young people watching, who was on the who was who were the varsity starters at that time. <clears throat> the varsity starters at that time was you had Reds and Terrell Stokes was the backcourt. You had, um, I believe, Michael Blunt, um, Lenard Stewart was in the middle. Um, Brian Samuels was on that team who eventually went to Rutgers. Um, and, um, and I think everybody else, like, like, like underclassmen, gotcha. like a Jared. Gotcha. You know, and some other guys that were just trying to, you know, find yeah. their find their way gotcha. okay. at that time. Yeah. But they they were the bigger names at that time. Gotcha. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was um, I went through the J, JV thing, um, and in Mr. L's system, you have to play baseball or run track for spring. There's no off. There's no off season. Gotcha. There's no off season. So I ran track with the guys. Which brings me up to summer league. Summer league, working on my game, playing for grats in the summer league. Um, being a rising sophomore. Now Reds is gone. Now Lenar Stewart's at Temple. So now it's some it's some daylight. Uh -huh, you know, I you. I, I'm thinking I can get a spot this time. Of course. So I go through the whole summer working out, working with grats, and here we are. We're in September of 1994. <laughs> what 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 happens then? Oh, I know what happened. Cross country again. Oh wow! <laughs> so so I'm back in cross country. I'm 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 going hard. What happens next? Tryouts. <laughs> oh snap! Now I've been a part of the grass program for a year now, so I'm not unknown. Uh huh. Which helps. All that helps. Mm -hmm. And I made the team as a sophomore. Wow. I made the team as a sophomore. Yeah. Um, me, um, Jared, and Eric Hood at that time was like some of the top sophomores in the area okay. and the up and coming, you know, um, a roster there at Gratz. And uh, we, you know, all three of us had limited roles because uh, Mr. L has it like a you have to kind of wait your turn uh -huh. type of program. Uh -huh. and, it, and it teaches you a lot, bro. It teaches you patience. Um, he just gives you things that I don't know if I could have got at Southern. I'm going to be very honest with you, or gotcha. Bach, or any place like that. Uh -huh. um, but just that patience and hanging in there is just something that you don't see in kids these days. They bouncing around, AAU, give my son this, and you over here one day, and over there the next day. And it, that's just, mm -hmm. you know. So I learned that. Uh -huh. I, I, I learned that. And, um, and having that patience paved the way for me to become who I am today. Gotcha. So now I'm a sophomore. I have a limited role. Um, I maybe average like eight or nine a game. You know, um, in my limited role, we are uh, we losing the championship that year against um, U City and Rashi Broken Bro and them guys. Uh huh. Um, and then um, what? I, I'm back at it. Track. Summer league. Now, this now summertime is a little different for me going into a junior year because I'm invited to ABCD camp, okay. which has the best players in the whole United States of America. Gotcha. So just curious, how did you get that invitation? Like, what, what do you think it was? <clears throat> was, it, was it somebody who just endorsed your name or somebody, you know, saw people were getting a glimpse of your game and thought you'd be worthy? Or what was it? Because, you know, everybody, well, so, just, everybody just wasn't getting the invite to ABCD. Oh, flat out. Not, not at all, bro. And you're absolutely right. Um, So it, it had to be, I'm going to be very honest, for me and Jared, um, because our numbers would really never support us even being there. Yeah. Because of our role on our teams. Gotcha. But, if you, but the eye test tells you they belong. Of course. Of course. See, gotcha. when you look at a Lynn Greer or Donnie Carr at that time or whoever – their roles on their team was different 
So their numbers support them going. Of course, of course. Yep. yep. Um, and us, it was just the eye test because we was averaging single digits at that time, both yeah, of us. Yeah. Because we were reserved, yeah. we were reserves at that time. Of course, yep, yep. Um, but on a nasty ranked team, mm -hmm. you know, so I gotta exactly. add that exactly. as well. Exactly. Um so I, I th I'm thinking that played a role, our affiliation with, 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 with grads played a role. Um, but bro, I'm gonna be very honest with you when I got there. Bro, I went, I went bananas. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I played, like, on a national scene. Yes, yes. And I'm a guy, um, if you ever see me play, I never shy away from the moment. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was the moment. Yes. Oh, let me see. Tim Thomas, Kobe Bryant, Rip Hamilton. <laughs> uh, you name it. They're here. Wait, wait, what? Give me some other names. Who else you remember that was there? Oh, my God. Um, Jermaine O'Neal, uh, uh, Shaheen Holloway, Khalid El Amin, uh, uh, Ed Cohn. I mean, bro, bro, like, ACC. Who, who that, everybody. Hey, hey, bro, hey, bro. And, and it's crazy because Philly sent the lineup, cross. Cynthia, Philly sent the lineup. So we got Kobe Bryant and we got Rip. Because, I, I mean, when you on the road, they're from Philly. That's Philly. That's Philly, of course. And right, it's Philly. You know, when you get home, they from the county. No doubt. But when you on the road, we family. <laughs> we all represent. And that's just, that's, just, that's just real. So then, but peep game, bro. So then we got, we have Yad Davis in the building. We got Donnie Carr in the building. We got Lynn Greer, myself, Jared. We got Ehud. We have Michael Jordan. We got rest in peace, Lamar Plummer and them guys um, in the building. And um, we had a nice lineup from Philadelphia that represented. Philly versus everybody. That, that, was a that nice, represented. Nice representation. <laughs> and, and, and it's crazy because uh, I got a chance to see some guys that I didn't get this, that I don't get to see except in Philly. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because I'm always leery of guys that's only good in Philly. Uh huh. And then we out here in East Jablip, Nebraska, and you're not the same player. Of course, yep. yep. You know what I mean? And then we have those guys. Uh -huh. And, that, you know, and every area has a guy that just don't rise to the occasion if they're out of their comfort zone, if uh -huh. you will. Yep. You know, so I got a chance. Um, I mean, I was on uh, – Tim Thomas was on my team. I wow. was a nobody, right? I was a nobody, and he was everybody, yes. right? I had him – I had Jason Hart was my point guard. When we actually went to Syracuse and played in the league for 12, 13 years. And what, and what happened was they, they, they took all the attention on offense. Yes. So they left this skinny kid, Marvin O'Connor, nobody, in the corner wide open. And, bro, if I get going, bro, I get going. Yes. <laughs> and and that's, what it, that's what ended up happening. I got going. Yes. And I'm like, this boy can shoot it. Yeah. This boy catching the joint in traffic, dunking on Joker, and it was just good. Hey, man, listen, bro. My confidence went to the moon. Yes. <laughs> my confidence went to the moon. So there I'm coming into a junior season. I have a little bit more hype than I've, I've had. Gotcha. Um, hey, just curious, what, just stay there for a second before you talk about the junior season. What type of attention, like, what, what, what's some of the first glimpses glimpses of different types of attention did you have there? For example, you know, did you have guys, you know, some you know, some writers or whatever, you know, coming up to you after the games, asking you questions or trying to find out more who you are? Did you have coaches approaching you? Like, what, what did you notice about that experience when you performed? What did you notice, that, at, at, you know, what did you notice at, after that? You know, the biggest thing I noticed? Mm. Letters was more letters was coming in the mail. Got you. Got you. By by nice stacks. Got you. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. The type of letters I was bringing home from high school. Yes, yes. You know, he would wrap them in a the rubber band and hand them to you, and it's like, damn, Clemson, North Carolina State, wow. Xavier, everything local. I'm like, they look, oh man, I'm getting. Oh, I'm, getting, I'm on a radar now, yes, if you will. I I'm on, now I'm on a radar. The result of the ABCD stuff puts you on the radar. Correct. That, gotcha. along with some of the AAU stuff that summer, put me on a radar. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I am now on the radar. No doubt. I was, I was probably in the thousands ranked somewhere, and I am now on the radar. No doubt. Very unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. <laughs> Which, like I said, leads me up to a junior season. Uh-huh. Um, junior season, when me and Jared, finally, it's our turn. 
Uh huh. Wow, it's our turn, J.K. What are we gonna do with this? Mm -hmm. And we grab life by the horns, and we really put on. We really tough the guard. Yeah. <laughs> we really, really tough the guard. And I mean, bro, I end up in the semifinals. Me and Yad Davis went at it. I end up having twenty nine thirty at the end of that game, and then I came back and had thirty five in the chip. Against Edison, which you which you which you yeah. you you posted, you know, some yeah. time ago. Yeah. Um, now my name is on fire. Yes, yes. Let me go back, though, Star. Let me go back because one thing I gotta add is, as a sophomore, I'm Proposition Forty Eight qualified as well. Okay. I already have my SAT scores, gotcha. and I'm an excellent student. Uh -huh. where you got guys sweating to try to get the score at the last minute. The last Marvin O'Connor has a score as a sophomore. Gotcha. So, so you, you ain't had that to worry about? You could just focus I had that to worry about. And it, and it does what? It, 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 it enhances your recruiting. Exactly. We don't have to worry about that from this kid. Yep. First thing they ask you, you know? is, how about his grades? Is that say two scores? You're good. And uh, uh, huh, take a look. They're like, yo, he got this as a sophomore. Yo, like, oh, this is, this is great, mm -hmm. you know? Because, you know, you know about five or six or seven conferences, if you don't get the score, they can't accept you. Exactly. Correct. Um, yeah, they didn't, they didn't let guys sit out. In Atlantic 10, they did, and a couple other conferences. But some of them bigger conferences, ACC, there's no such thing as sitting out. We don't have that here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's very, very uh, instrumental that you have that um, at some time. So uh, I'm in my junior season. Excellent season. We losing the chip to Edison, which you see. Um, crazy discrepancy. Um, and now I'm on to my senior season, and I'm going back to where? I'm going back to ABCD. Uh huh. And I'm and I'm going to. I'm going to Vegas this year. Vegas has the, probably the biggest AAU tournament in the country at this time. And what AAU team was that? The Hunting Park Warriors you were on. No. No? No, I took my talents down 95, and I played with Delaware's team. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Right. So the guys called up myself, Naeem Crenshaw, Vic Thomas, Shati Meatball Cooks. We all go to Delaware. Okay. I, I team up with an unbelievable talented point guard by the name of Jermaine Medley from Delaware, which is, this boy is bad. Yes, yes. I definitely remember that name. Hey, Star, this boy is the top three or four most talented people I ever played with or against, wow. talent-wise. Wow. This God-given ability. Wow. That you just can't, you can't get it on Black Friday, you can't get it at Walmart. It just came from God. Exclusive. <laughs> right. Guys like him, guys like Kareem Towns, Yah yeah. Davis, they just have natural ability that you just it, – it, it's, it's just crazy. But yeah. if you look at guys like Donnie Carr, you can tell Donnie Carr worked on his game. Mm -hmm. He didn't just get out of bed that way. And you can uh -huh. just you can tell, you can see the transformation. So mm -hmm. I team up with Jermaine Medley, and we formed this unbelievable backcourt out in Las Vegas. Gotcha. But we, we tore that joint up crazy to the point – we talked about going to college together. Wow. Wow. We like, we like, yeah, bro. Like we compliment each other so well. And we and we did. And we did. And we ended up going to Nova together. Mm -hmm. Um, but at that time, I am a top fifty player in the country. Uh -huh. So let's rewind. Let's rewind, Star, because it's very, very important. Not for me. Um, obvious for obvious reasons, but for, for kids and uh -huh. for parents. Of course. Right? If you listen to what I said, right, I said Marvin O'Connor cut as a ninth grader. Uh-huh. Marvin O'Connor limited role as a tenth grader. Mm -hmm. Marvin O'Connor in, uh, increases his role, grabs life by the horns, and now, as a senior, I am top 50 in America. Mm -hmm. Not at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Not at 12. At 17, 18. Uh-huh, yep. 
You know, because I think they, a lot of people want instant gratification and they want it and they want it now. Yes, yes, yes. And that's not everybody's journey. And, uh -huh. and, and you know, I feel bad for, for some of the kids mm -hmm. that has um, a level of pressure so early. Yeah, yeah. You know, so early. So, um, and I say that to say if a lot of these people just hang in there and stay the course and keep working, things yeah. will happen. Of course. Things yeah. will happen. And I'm, and I'm, you know, a living testimony to waiting my turn. And now, look, I'm picking any university at any level at that time. That's right. Yep, yep. Right. And so um, Jared said, Marv, I'm thinking about going to the Big East. I'm like, Jared, what you talking about, kid? I'm going to go to the Big East, too. You ain't saying nothing. Of course. You know what I mean? So, man, we had a, a sign signing day, and we signed, and um, – me, Paul Cook signed to Coppin State, and we signed. He was signed West Virginia. And I went to Nova, um, and it just was uh, some good stuff from, from where we come from, um, from ninth grade to twelve and out. And I watched him. I watched him as well. Um, how he became a six-two guy to a six-six guy mm -hmm. in 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 uh, in, in uh, as a senior, and how he elevated his game and his confidence went through the roof. And we also complimented each other so well. Hey, bro, I've been blessed to play with guys like him, like the guy like Jermaine Medley, and I, and I can't speak his name so much because he was so good. Mm -hmm. Bro, That it, it is scary. And anybody know in my era who played against that joker, he was dangerous. I mean, the guy went to Oak Hill. Everybody can't go to Oak Hill. Yes, yes, yes. Is he, so, is he still around? Is he still around somewhere? You think? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I spoke to him fairly recently. He's down in um down in Maryland. Um, he's like in the banking industry, doing something in, in that world. Yes. Um, but yeah, just 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 dangerous. And then what? I team up with a guy like Jameer Nelson, so I've been able to play with some really good point guards. Yes, yes. Who 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 quite naturally treated me well on the wing. That's now right. we just complimented each other really, uh, uh, really well, man. Yeah, do, you think, so, do you think that that really enhanced your ability, just having such good players to play off of? I mean, I, not just okay players, amazing players. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about Jameer Nelson, J.K. Right. You, know, you got right. from Delaware. You have some amazing talent to, to play off of. Did that really enhance you and give you more confidence? Or you know, how'd that work for you in your favor? Bro, yeah, so what it does is, so it, it goes, it's like a double-edged sword. Um, you have, you have most people who can't share limelight with people. Mm -hmm. If you're not the guy, you don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Simon Grant High School, in my four years of tenure, I played with at least 13 12 Division One athletes. Of course. So we were trained to play with other good players. Yes, yes, yes. For you sure. know, and that is very that's very vital, bro. Mm -hmm. That you're not the man in every in every situation. Yes. <laughs> you know, when your son or daughter is the man or is the girl all the time, mm -hmm. I don't think that's very realistic when they start going to some of these all American. Now you gotta pass the ball now. Yes. You see that guy? He's an all American too. Yes. You know, and um, Simon Gratz did an excellent job of preparing me for playing with other good players. Gotcha. From the very beginning. Totally makes from sense. From the very beginning. <laughs> um, so here we are, bro. Here we are. Um, I'm, 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 uh, let's just, just lose my father um, go, uh, in my senior year, and I'm on my way to college. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm at Nova. Um, I leave public housing, and now I'm on the main line. So hey, a lot's hey, going hey, on. Hey, if, if we could pause real quick, just tell me about – about um, just, just stay there for a second before you jump to the college experience. Tell okay. me a little bit about some of that adversity, what, you know, what you were going through in your life and, you know, the, the, losing your father, or any, any, other, any other adversity that was going on, and then, and then how you still continue to go on, man. I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you, bro. I had a, a very, very, very – good group of friends. Mm -hmm. Very good group of friends that you just don't, you don't have. So I had a good group of friends and I had both parents, which in them environments, you just don't have that. Mm -hmm. So on my friend's side, I got a group of friends that say, yeah, bro, 
Yeah, this is our life. This ain't what you do. You go ahead down there and do what you do. Mm-hmm. Right? And then on the flip side, I go home to a two-parent household as well. Even being in public housing. Mm-hmm. You know, so just dealing with everyday hurdles um, from being in that environment, things going to happen, you're going to indulge into some things. Um, it's just it's just the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. Um, but me losing my dad was very tough for me because I was just turning the corner of manhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I had to grow up a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I still had my siblings, my mom. Um, they helped me. They helped me up, bro. They helped me up because now I'm leaving for universities and um, and I'm missing a piece of the puzzle, which is tough. And we all cross that threshold, but at sometimes, you know, at that young, you, you know, but you don't want to accept it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I became more of a beast on the court with the way I approached the game. Um, it actually helped me because my focus and my determination, it enhanced that some, in some way, shape, or form. Uh-huh. I mean, I played with a certain tenacity um, that I already had, but it just got even, you know. Crazier. <laughs> got even crazier, which sometimes got me into trouble sometimes. I understand. Um, but um, so, bro, hey, I'm, 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 I'm just leaving a drug-infested neighborhood shootings daily, and now I'm on a main line. Uh-huh. City line ass. <laughs> Whoa. No, 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 no. I'm at Nova. Oh, I'm that's sorry. A, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm up there, bro. Lancaster, Lancaster, I'm up there. Yeah, because St. Joe's got a little bit of money, but Nova got the super money. That's right. The right? They got the super bag. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm in here, I'm looking around. Right, right, oh, this is right. different. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, hey, this is different from me. This is different. Um, so I got it's a, it's an adjustment period. Of course. Um, so I, my <laughs> whole all in one, the level of basketball changes. I went. From, uh-huh. I'm in the Big East, playing against Georgetown, St. John's, Syracuse, U- UConn every night. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. That changes. Um, I went from public high school education to a Catholic university on the main line. Oh, that changes. Uh-huh. Now my study habits has got to get better. Of course. Yep, yep. It, or, or I'm in trouble. That's right. That's right. Did grad prepare me for that? Absolutely not. <laughs> so it's on Marvin, right, to, to lock in and realize, and it's this a sense of, of a maturity, bro, that you have right. to have because you can easily screw this up. Easily. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so the academics, the environment, and the level of basketball, it's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to acclimate myself to all of it. And it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, I did well with two of the three. Um, a great environment. I'm socially getting connected, right? Mm-hmm. Academics. I'm taking um, uh, advantage of all the support systems. Whatever I got, bam, bam, bam. Oh, I got this. Uh-huh. Oh, this ain't as bad as I thought. Uh-huh. But athletically, I'm struggling because I just left a family-oriented program to now I'm in – what's up, Mr. Out of Pocket? Mm-hmm. Now I'm at Villanova where it's business. Mm-hmm. This is about money. Yes, yes. It's not about me. Yes, yep. Well, this is, this is different. So I went from a place where it just – about the kids and helping kids do well to like, yo, bro, you got to study hard at 6 a.m. You got to be here at 5. I'm like, this damn, that's like the army. <laughs> bro, this is different, bro. Bro, it was different. And I didn't know how to deal with, wow. with that. And it wasn't no nurturing. Yes. Oh, as I got older, I got it, though. I said, I went from playing boys high school basketball to men's College basketball. Oh, I'm a man. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a man, and you are asked to do things and hold up your end of the bargain. I mean, I mean, when you, when you think about that, when when you refer to a high school basketball team, you say the boys' team, the boys or the girls' team. College, it's the men's or the women's team. 
You, right. You, this, 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 this is an adult experience. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. I see you, E. Yeah, so um, so that right there, and I tell, and that's crazy because we big up Mr. L, right? So much. I mean, Mr. L, great, great uh, everything. Father figure, great coach, X's and O's guy. Great uh, everything will help you understand in the game and the game of life. And I said, one thing you didn't do, Mr. L, because all of us experienced that same loving family, but we wasn't prepared for the business of college basketball. I got you. And once we get there, we like, damn, now we chewing out the coach. Like, this guy's a nut. This, that, and the other. He just merely trying to take his family at the expense of you, and you don't understand. You don't understand how to do this. Yeah. And, and sometimes you have to look. Like, yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm 18. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, so that right there was one of the, one of the things that hindered me from playing well on the floor because I let a lot of stuff, you know, mentally sidetrack me uh -huh. from from you know me locking in on the things I know I can do, you know, on the on the on the floor. Yeah. So I went through a a tough patch, um, athletically, where I thought that. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna probably need a new a fresh start. Okay. Um I reached out to my rest in peace, man, uh Johnny, uh John Hartnett, and said, John, uh, my, and mind you, bro, this is like December, bro. I, I wanna get out of here. This this place ain't yeah. for me. Yeah. And I'm like, John, I I I, I might need a, a fresh start, bro. Yeah, I need you to help me. Like, well, what you wanna do? Because I'm sure all the guys who was recruiting you would love to have you. Uh -huh. I said, Well, I said, well, listen. I, I I still want to stay local, and I and I and I and I don't want to go to Temple. That's out. They they just move too slow for me over there. They yeah. they, they, they play the zone. I like to get up and down. Yeah. So they like that. I'm gonna call Phil. What you think about that? Cause I call him. Yes. Yes. And he calls Phil on his own and calls me back. <laughs> just just like that. <laughs> just like that. He said. Phil said. Listen. He'd love to have you. He said, but. Just keep your grades up, keep your GPA up, because if your GPA go down, it's gonna be hard to transfer you. Hard. Yep, yep. He said, and we'll 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 accept him with open arms. Wow. So look, now I'm on a, another school's bench like this, just counting my days. <laughs> wow. I can't wait to get out of this joint. Wow. You don't even know. I'm out of here. Wow. Dre Howard, what up? <laughs> yeah, bro. So so I make the transition, and Dre on here, because he also left the Big East to come to St. Joe's. That's what's up. <laughs> so I made the transition to St. Joe's, and now it's closer to home, more of some West Philly flavor. And now I got an Andre Howard. Now I got a Naeem Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. um, I like this. So look, I get a chance, because hey, I hey, got to hey, sit hey, out. Hey, real quick, Go hold ahead. that thought. Hold that thought. Um, what did it mean to you to be able to have John Harnett to call on in that moment? And, and what if, you know, Harnett wouldn't have been available at that moment? Like, what, what if, what, what if, you know, what do you think? I guess two part question. What did it mean to have him in your life at that time? Your father wasn't around, you know what I'm saying? To have Harnett in that position right. to be able to help you make that connection. Um, well, it meant everything. It meant everything. Cause he the one, he's one of the guys who, who helped nurture me as a young kid. So it meant everything for me to have Johnny H around um, at that time, and be, be able to reach out to him um, in time of need. Um, but, you know, quite naturally, if I had to go call Mr. Ellaby, that, that, you know, I had the resources, of course. which is great. Of course. I had the resources. I could almost call anybody yeah. in the city, but I know how well connected he was. Okay. It was just an easier, easier connection for me. Yeah. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, so continue. You said you, you know, now you're there. You, you like the, you like the, you like the landscape. You got Crenshaw. Continue. Yeah. So, so I, I have to sit out. I have to sit out, and now I get a chance to take a step back from basketball, concentrate on academics, just practice, and 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 and. Get a feel for things. I just came from a rough situation, so sitting out wasn't that bad okay. at that time. Gotcha. So I sit out. A, I sit out a year. Watch, you know, Dre Howard and uh, like I said, Naeem and them. Um, they had a, a shaky season, um, to where um, couldn't wait to get a chance to help them guys out. 
-hmm. You know? Um, So I sit out the season, do well academically. Now I'm back on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back on the floor. Um, We, as soon as I get back, we take a trip to Italy as a team. Gotcha. You know what I mean? To build that continuity, um, that, that cohesiveness um, yep. with new guys. Because mm-hmm. Bill Phillips also transferred over with me mm-hmm. um, from Archbishop Carroll. Um, he went to William & Mary and then came back to St. Joe's, 6'10", do everything. Um, so we got a nice little nucleus here. Uh, and who was the nucleus? Um, so now we have, we have Andre Howard. We have Naeem Crenshaw. We have myself. We got, like I said, we got Bill Phillips. We got the kid Alexander Sazanoff that came from Cardinal Harris seven one, um, and we had a couple got Damian Reed from Canada. Um, <laughs> this boy crazy, and um, <laughs> and uh, and we had a couple guys. We had a guy from Massachusetts with Frank Wood uh, Williams was six nine shooter. So we had like we got a nice <laughs> we got a nice group of guys, bro. At that time, mm-hmm. so we think we we think we could do something. So I come in my sophomore season. I think Drake and them were seniors at the time. And we struggle a little bit. We stress new for me. Um, uh, you know, my role is increased now at that level. Okay. So I got to do more. Uh-huh. I wasn't accustomed to doing more at the college level. Gotcha. You know, so I'm trying to find my way as well. Um, so we have a we have an up and down season, bro. Mm-hmm. We have an up and down season. But I ain't going to lie, towards the end of the season, right, so we, we we like, man, listen, we ain't making no postseason. We got number five Temple at the Palestra on a Friday night. So I say, hey, Dre, hey, nah, let me dig this, right? Get this is our season right here. That's right. <laughs> we got we to get these. We got to get these guys. That's hey, right. man, we tuned Pepe Sanchez and Mark Karch and them guys up. <laughs> hey, hey, man, they like, yo, man, what's up with the – look, we, we come in, we like – we like ten and seventeen. So they 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 number five in the country. That's right. Yeah, we going yeah yeah we gonna mess they seeding up a little <laughs> bit. Cause at cause at the end of the day, cause we gonna compete regardless. Right. Of course, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we end up um knocking them off. Oh, which was the that, that was huge. yeah we knocked them off. Yeah, we knocked them off. And that, that, hey, that was like we won the chip. That was like we won the chip. That was, that was that's what I'm saying. That was like y'all championship right there. And yeah. Like said, Big Apple Athletics is that it's the first time Martelli ever beat the Owls. Big time. What better time to do it than when you number five in the country? Wow, that's huge. That meant a lot. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So so I mean, uh, so we move on. Um now I'm gonna, you know, coming up to be a junior, and I have uh we have the we have the kid coming in. The kid, the kid, Chester Finest. Yes, Jamaica. he's coming in. Yep, he's coming in. Funny thing is, and a lot of people don't know unless you was there. We saw something in the kid early, but he still was a kid. Mm-hmm. He still was a kid, and I think I myself, uh, Naeem, and a couple other guys did a great job of taking the pressure off him early. Uh huh. Um, cause when you can just kick it to a guy like myself and you don't have to do as much, you know what I mean? You look better. Uh-huh. And what happened is they built this confidence up here to where it never came back down. Got you. Got you. It never came back down and he ran with it, mm-hmm. which was he supposed to, uh-huh. you know what I mean? And which was, which was a great thing for him. Um, and we, and we, and we had a nice run. Uh, we lost in the second round to Stanford, which everybody talks about. Uh, the game they had thirty seven um, on, on that stage right there, bro. Crazy stage. Um, just to just to uh, put the city on my back and, and just put it on for the city, man. And, the, and the, just put it on for the my city. memory. The 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 eighteen points in the fifty seven seconds. That was your junior year. Correct. Was that correct? Was that, was that leading up to the tournament? Or still regular season or that was that was the last regular season game. Um. Of the yeah, Atlantic 10, the last, last regular season game. So explain that. Take me back through that night. I'm talking about explain the, the pregame, what was in your mind that night, the game, and then that, 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 that last – break that down for the people, man, because that's amazing, man. That's, that's, that's historic. That's legendary, man. That's hey, bro, happen, man. 
And that, that, that stuff like that don't happen every day. That, that's the type of stuff you do in video games, man. <laughs> so, so, bro, I, I, I'm going I'm to I'm tell you something. So, we playing a game, and we down. So, we playing a game of try to score and take a foul and stop the clock. Gotcha. We're playing a, a game of that. Mm-hmm. I am oblivious to what's happening. Mm-hmm. We lose a game by one. Bro, hey, bro, they rushed me into the um the post game. So after they got the locker room, yeah, we need to see him. <laughs> so I mean, I you know, I think nothing of it, whatever post game. So and they sent it the post game. game, right? Y'all lost the game. Yeah, we lost the game. I'm I pissed that we lost. We had like an eight game winning streak. Yeah. So he's sitting in there. So he's like, yeah, what you think about um what you think about the you know, you guys the performance tonight and, and everything that transpired in the game? Mm-hmm. I said, well, you know, we took a tough loss and it kind of messed up our momentum going into the A ten tournament. Dick Girardi said, yeah, bro, I ain't talking about that, bro. <laughs> so I said, Yeah, well, what you talking about? I'm talking about <laughs> That 18 points you just scored in the last 59 seconds. <laughs> crazy. So, look, look. Hey, how about this crazy to me at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. no, 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 what you talking about? Because yeah. I was just playing the game. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? You're just playing. Bro, I'm just oblivious to, to that even happen, bro. Of course. I'm like, what? He like, bro. <laughs> he like, yo. You, you just scored 18 points in the final <laughs> in the final minute of a, of a basketball game. Man, you kidding me, man. Stop playing with me, man. That's insane. Hey, yo, man. that joint was on ESPN that night. Wow. They, they called it Marvin's Minute. <laughs> wow. I said, yo, that joint went that joint with that joint went viral quick. That's early. That's before viral was viral. That's, yeah, <laughs> it went quick. Oh, this kid in Philadelphia scored. He, he did what? What you talking about? You can't do that in basketball. Wow. So like, you so, tripping. So, so what was the sequence? Like, was it three-pointer? Bang. You know, foul shot. But what was the sequence of points in that? Yeah. Point? Yeah, so I, it, I, made, I made three threes in that, in, that, in that minute. And what happened, a pump fake Sewell, rest up Sewell, um, Butler, I pump fake Sue, got him up in the air, and I jumped into him. Now I'm shooting three. Uh huh. Right. So, in that, like I said, in that, in that 59, I got three threes. I believe I made five foul shots mm-hmm. in two layups or something goofy like that, or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. Something I remember I came here and I had a reverse. But like, like you just playing, and like you saying, you're trying to score real quick and stop the clock. Uh huh. And, and 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 you don't know you creating history. Wow. You creating history. I, I was on the Boo Farmer podcast t- uh, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I pay. I played a skit from um a game against Georgia Tech in the tournament. Uh huh. And Bill Walton says, um, uh, but we got this guy, uh, it's Marvin O'Connor, uh. He's, I mean, this guy's just a couple of weeks ago, he scores 18 points in 59 seconds. And, he, and then he says, man, even Will Chamberlain didn't do that. Wow. <laughs> Spoken star. Legend, you know what I mean? Star. Yes. Hey, you stop playing. Yes. Hey, hey, bro. So, and it's crazy because when I'm t- taking a peek at these basketball groups and all this barbershop talk, Legendary. But then I just got a guy who top 50 all time big me up. Yes. Legendary. And I got my own ESPN Sports Century star. I got my own ESPN Sports Century star. Crazy, dog. Crazy. Do you, hey, bro, do you know how appreciative I am of having something like that be a part of my legacy? It's insane. Man. And a lot of people don't know that Sports Century is just a modern, uh, it's the modern day 30 for 30. 30. For 30. Yeah, sports. Yeah, NFL. that's all it is. But but hey, for hey, somebody to he, hey, real quick, go ahead. Real quick. Um, it's, we got thirty more seconds. I ain't gonna cut you short. So what we are gonna do is I'm gonna end this one, save it, and then just rejoin me in like a minute. Got you. We, we're just gonna pick it. Okay, okay, bro. Okay, got you, bro. Everybody for sure. rejoin me. I'm gonna just end this, and we gonna everybody gonna come right back. Come right back. All right. Okay.
Star Raw Sports, man. If you've been tuned in for the first hour, this is my man Marvin O'Connor, man, telling some legendary stories here on Legends Week. Um, Simon Gratz, legend, man. Uh, St. Joe's legend, man. Um, everybody rejoin. Make sure you share with your people. Share this live, man, so that your people can rejoin, um, so that your people can get on here, man, and um, you know, get some of this good information, man, from my man Marv O'Connor, man. Classic, classic, classic information he's giving up, man. Also, um, at the end, you know, y'all know the format. Um, I'm opening up to Marv, and uh, you know, he seems, you know, just like all the other guests, you know, open book. Um, so y'all, you know, you'll have your opportunity to ask Marv some questions, you know, in the Q and A. Um, so start getting y'all, you know, start getting your wheels turned, and start, you know, thinking of some things that you want to ask Marv um, about his career um, as well. Um, he just left off talking about um, his. Um, you know, just the, the, the amazing thing that he did, scoring that um, 18 points in that 59 seconds um, at uh, against LaSalle. And um, if y'all don't know, that Sports Century, that was before the whole 30 for 30, you know, thing, you know, popped off. So Marv, like, I mean, that, that's, you know, he, he's going to elaborate on elaborate on that when he comes back, I'm sure. Um, the whole Sports Century thing, that was, that was prior to um, the whole 30 for 30 thing, you know, popping off. So Marv had his own Sports Century little documentary on ESPN, which was legendary, man. So that was definitely legendary, man. So I'm going to get my man Marv on here, send an invitation, and we're going to continue the conversation. We're going to continue the conversation. Once again, just want to say thank y'all, man, for joining us for Legends Week, man. Um, if you guys um, missed um, any of the past episodes, make sure you log on to the website, rawsports.tv or uh, Raw Sports Films on YouTube, and you can see all those past episodes. Bro, can you hear me? Um, I can hear you, but I can't see you. No, I wonder why. Uh, here, just try to um, if you can, just X out, and then just try to re send me, you know, send me a uh, try to rejoin again. Some minor, uh, all right, there we go. Yeah. All right. Hey, What's so the, the last thing you were mentioning, I just want you to pick up where, pick up right there. Um, just to put in, you know, keep putting in perspective for the people how huge that, um, sports century was, you know, before the 30, 30 days, kind of pick up from there and just kind of break, you know, break that down again. Yeah. So like I was saying, um, yeah, uh, the sports century, a uh, guy, uh, ESPN reached out to me. Um, and said he wanted to, you know, do a story, man. And he, you know, stopped what they was doing, came down South Philly, came to public housing, cause and shot and shot the joint. Um, it, 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 it was it was very humbling to say the least. Yes, it's the biggest sports media outlet in the world would stop what they doing to come check me out. It, it, yes. it, 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 was, it was something different, bro. And again, something like that is. It just, it just, they'll never go away. It will always be a part of your legacy. No doubt. And one of the other, uh, one of the last things, um, if people had missed it, one of the, you had mentioned, um, you was on the Blue Farmer podcast and, um, you had that little snippet of, of another legend just comparing you, not, not, not comparing, but just saying, you know, break, explain that, break that down again. Yeah. Yeah. So what he said is, you know, while he was commentating the game, he just said, man, this kid, Marvin O'Connor, man, uh, he scored 18 points. In, in, in less than one minute. And then he was like, man, he said, that's crazy, man. Even Will Chamberlain didn't do that. And we know how dominant um, you know, how Will Chamberlain was. And for him to say that just kind of spoke volumes for me. Because mm. um, like I was saying, bro, you know, when we in these groups and you reading some of the stuff that people say, I know those are people just say anything. Yeah, no doubt. They say anything. And like, and
Yeah. But um, this barbershop talk, man. Yeah, yeah. This barbershop yeah. talk. When you got a guy who's top 50, he got a top 50 NBA jacket. Mm -hmm. And he tells you that another guy with a top 50 NBA jacket has never done something, and as he was the most dominant player to ever play the game. Yes. <laughs> Yo, bro, if I never do – if I only do one thing in my life, and that's that, uh -huh. basketball-wise. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, man. Insane. It's just crazy, man. Insane. It's crazy. So I went live, and you probably know that. I went live a few times mm -hmm. coming at Jokers and just talking and playing with the, the – uh, Pandemic was crazy. Everybody's at home, and we got a chance to 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 be even more competitive on yeah. this joint. Uh -huh. um, but I think a lot of people miss what I was saying about just merely because um, we always on there and you're always comparing somebody. Yeah, this and we always tearing person, somebody person, down person, for some yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you like who you like. Of course, that's cool. Don't make one guy better than the other. Uh -huh. That's good. But we don't spend enough time celebrating people, man. Of course, of course. We, yeah. we just, like, like, how long are we going to be on here and just keep talking about this one guy and what he did and didn't do or he can't go left, he couldn't shoot? Like, we know that. Mm -hmm. But if he had, was able to average 27, he couldn't shoot. And he done his job. You know what I no mean? Doubt. So, no like, <laughs> and that's why what you're doing, and I want to say this a few times, what you're doing is different. It's different because it is all positive. It's not like, well, the kid can't do this. Like, bro, <laughs> we all know that in, in, in any um, sports, somebody will have some kind of weakness. Of course, yeah. So for you to say that he can't do that, like we, we watched him, we know he can't shoot. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We know, we know he can't shoot. Neither could a lot of people who made millions of dollars, though. Of course, of course. Yeah, so we got to start Philadelphia. Um, just don't celebrate each other. And I know it's good for social media. And it might be good for talk. But we, even after we done talked about it, we still got to say, no, I was playing, man. But boy, it was really tough. Of course. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And we got to start celebrating people, man. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that should be what it's about. And it has trickled down to the younger generation. Uh-huh. Because how are you comparing guys as 12? Like what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And I and I and I, 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 I mean I'm so blessed to be from my era. Uh, hundred percent. Straight up, and you know, cause we had some values, yeah. we had some morals with what we did. You know, now it's just this platform have gave the wrong people a voice. You know, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, hey, but that's uh, all good. Quick, um, my man brought up something that I didn't want to miss. My man, shout out to my man. Um, if you if you can give give a quick shout out to my man Boyd. Uh, Boyd Marston, that's one of my homies from Norristown. He said you're one of his favorite player, players of all time. He said he was watching um, one of the uh, – first, if you could give, give a quick shout out to my man. Yeah, my man yeah Boyd, Boyd, man. Hey, hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Um, I, I mean, you know, sometimes I hear that and, and it, mind, it mind boggles me um, that uh, people show you that kind of love, bro, you know. And I also told Boo that – um. You know, uh, Mike Maracanum came up and told me that uh, uh, Danny Rump wore 11 because of me. Yeah, wow. I don't know, you wow. kidding me? That's huge, man, wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. Hey, Star, you had an effect on a young kid like that? Yeah, that's And huge. I never met the kid? That's, that's big time. That's huge, man. That's big time, bro. That's awesome. And I appreciate that kind of love from you. For I sure. appreciate that. Well, my man, Boyd, he, um, one of my next questions um, after – um, talking about the, the the LaSalle game and then the Georgia Tech game where you had 21. I'm just looking at my notes here. The the Stanford game. Talk about that Stanford game where you dropped that 37. Talk about that game. Big time. Big time stage. Um, and like I said earlier in the, in, the, in the interview, I don't shy away from the moment, bro. This, this, this is where it's at. So I got 20,000 in the stands, Star, and I got a million watching at home. Mm -hmm. It's time. Yes, of it's course. It's time. And, and that's how I approached it. Yeah. And I approached the game just like that. And, you know, I had 30 before, so it's not like I'm new to getting 30. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm on the big stage getting 30 against the number one seed. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Which was big. And people and people walk up to me and talk about that like it happened yesterday, bro. Wow, wow. It's crazy. It's, it's Stanford, crazy, Stanford man. Stanford was number one at that time? Stanford was the number one seed in the tournament. Oh, no, they were probably number two in the country. Right, right. So we had knocked off Georgia Tech 
and then we played them on the number one seed. And with 59 seconds left, the score was 80 to 80. Wow. So we had our shot. We had our shot. <sighs> Dang. That's all you can ask for, man. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> oh, man, boy um, said uh, they were number two in the country. There you have it. Wow. There you have it. Wow. So, yeah, continue continue talking about your um, the rest of your college career. I think I think you – Yeah, so – Yeah, so I – Yeah, so junior year um, – So now, uh, after the big performance, the name is buzzing. Name is buzzing. Um, and at this time, I want to take a look at – the professional realm and see what they're talking about. Uh -huh. And what I, and what I learned by kind of like reaching out to certain people that, uh, that um, like my name, I'm on, I'm on their radar, but I'm very low on the radar. Cause even, and people didn't know, people don't know that, you know, a lot of times people just say, yeah, you was hot. Like, yeah, bro, relax. I, I can explain it to you. Uh -huh. Um, because even at that time, that year, if I would have came out in my junior season, Gilbert Arenas went second round. Wow. And that, that, so that, that puts what, it in perspective. That's a good way. To you, 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 and you have to know that. You uh -huh. just can't just, you know, if he was second round in Arizona, you know what I mean? I probably would have been picked in the 50s somewhere. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So to come back and try to improve my status is what was probably the best thing for me at that time. Uh huh. So um, so we uh, so in that summer, bro, I got invited to USA tryouts out in Colorado Springs, which was awesome. Me and Jameer went out there, uh, played well. Uh, he ended up actually playing for the night nineteen and unders. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I go by, kind of go by age, yeah. Um, which was good uh, for our school and for himself. Um, and now I'm on, I'm on to my senior year, expecting big things. And I think when it ended up happening, uh, we started the season off ranked number nine in the country. Wow, that's huge. Little old St. Joe's University that's is number nine in the country. Uh -huh. I'm on everybody's preseason All-American list. Uh -huh. Top 10, top 15. Oh, hold on, I can't forget this. This is for the people right here. <laughs> I was nominated to by Playboy what? as an All-American. Wow. <laughs> Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Dig this. So, I'm a <laughs> So, they fly us out to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. They fly us out to Chicago and we just having it our way, bro. It's crazy. No, it ain't it ain't I know I said Playboy, it ain't a whole bunch of women are not walking around, but we are literally allowed to do anything and spend anything. Wow. It it, it, it was crazy. I know when I'm, I know when some of the people got the bills that we left. It was crazy. It was wait, crazy. Wait, I had to. So, how, so, so how is Playboy involved in the whole? Like, how were you nominated? Like, how 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 did that happen? And they're not like a sports entity. Bro, I, I don't, I, bro. I don't know. All <laughs> I know is, I know is the people who do all the media stuff say, "Yeah, you've been nominated as Playboy All American." Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> they want to, right? They want to send you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. They want to send you out to Chicago for a weekend. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. Huh? Get the tickets ready, what? and I shoot out there. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> and like I said, it was, it was, it, bro. It was crazy, bro. Bro, it was, it was, it was, it was something else, man. I really, I mean, to say the least, I enjoyed myself. Wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, I was on. I mean, bro. I mean, I got crazy um, magazines, old school stuff. And like I said, top 10 in the country and all like that. But I think that Phil Martelli probably was a little overwhelmed by the success early. Okay. Because he tried to tweak some things um, that I didn't think need to be tweaked. I mean, bro, we got to this point by being guard dominant. Uh-huh. And he tried to introduce some things that didn't go well. And, and we just had a shaky season and ended up going to the NIT. Um, and I still average about 18 a game, so it's not like, you know, 18 like a game in college. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but the draft stock can went down. Okay. So now I got to try to fight to get it back. Mm -hmm. So I get invited to Portsmouth, me, 
Flip Murray, John Simons. Uh, I'm just trying to think who was there from this area. And, and a couple other guys, maybe about two other guys, go down Portsmouth to uh, try to improve their draft status. Uh-huh. And is this, a, um, is this like a draft workout, pre-draft? This is the NBA, thing? yes. It's an NBA workout for seniors only. Okay. For, for college seniors only. Mm -hmm. So after you leave there, you get your individual workouts. I worked out with the Sixers. I worked out with the Bucks. I worked out with these guys individually. And what, and what ended up happening, just see. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't getting into that. I ain't getting into that. So um, I end up um, after the draft was over and didn't get drafted. I end up getting a call from the Magic. Okay. The Magic calls me say, "Listen, we in Boston next week. We want you on our summer league team." Okay. Who? I meet you in Boston. No doubt. Get to Boston. Curious, curious, did you did you have an agent or were you just flying solo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, at this point, you got an agent. I'm a senior. Um, and he's making moves for me. Okay, gotcha. So I get to Boston. Bro, my first three games, I play lights out. Okay. I play lights out. First, right off the street, right into the gym. I mean, like, like nothing ever happened. And what ended up happening was Orlando said, listen, you did an excellent job. We want to invite you down um, to training camp. Okay. Now, my agents say we had these two ball clubs right here over across the water saying they going to give you this now if you go in August. Okay. And to me, it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Do I go down Orlando chasing a dream? Maybe there might be one spot left. Mm -hmm. You got five, six guys trying to get one spot. Or do you go across the water and make this tax-free money? Of course. Um, My man, get the tickets and I'm going over. No doubt. So that, so, that, so that was an easy decision for you? Easy, easy decision. Okay. Easy decision. I mean, bro, it's not like I have kids or I have a family. Uh -huh. You just pick up and you roll. And, and, and regardless, um, like, like people don't understand, your, your goal was to be hired. Your goal was to get a job. That's a job. Playing basketball. I, bro, I wait, always... Wait, 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 and you... And right. So, <laughs> that ain't, so let's call a spade a spade. That's not the initial goal as a kid. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So the kid goal is the higher goal. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You don't know nothing about playing, going to Spain. Nobody is in the say, yeah, yeah, I want to play for uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. <laughs> nobody, nobody say that, Star. No, nobody no, say that. That's true. That's true. So, so we understand what the goal, what the goal was. But as you mature, yeah. you realize the goal is being able to take care of your family. Of course, of course. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> what ended up happening is I went over there. I started off in Italy, but I ended up on Vladi Divas's professional team wow. in Yugoslavia. Wow. So before uh, the United States seen Darko Milicic and all them guys, I was in the same league. I seen them cats already. Uh -huh. Got you. Got you. You know what I mean? Um, so I was over there for a few years. But what I realized early, Star, that, that being – away for 10 months a year wasn't for me. Okay. And I knew that I couldn't do this for a long period of time. Okay, gotcha. That's just me. I, I mean, family-oriented guy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack my chips and I'm going to make some wise moves. I understand. Yep. I'm going to make some wise moves. So I stayed as long as I could. That's one full season, couple half a season. I gotta go home. That's too much for me. Yeah. Just, just the bro. When you're in a certain country and you see somebody that's black, whether you know him or not, you like, yo, dog. Like, what's up with you, bro? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what you doing out you know here? <laughs> yeah, like, damn, bro. Cause you're just happy to see somebody. Yeah. And it's just like that whole thing of, uh, I'm on a bench, um. I don't, you know, I got to get a translator to tell me the plays. Mm -hmm. And this is a, yeah, this is too much for me. Yeah. This yeah, is too yeah. much. So all the guys like the Lynn Greers and the DeWine Robinsons and the guys who was able to take this thing and do a dime. And yo, my hat 
is off to you. Because it takes a special individual to be able to stay away from your family for 10 years. Yeah. It just does. Yeah, yeah. It just does. And in Lee Greer's situation, he had a child. Mm -hmm. So that's even more difficult mm -hmm. to do it. Yep. So you got to take your head off to somebody who's able to do that. Yeah, and to figure out for a long period of time because right? that's a very lonely journey, bro. Yeah, that's very lonely. Trust Especially me. You come just like you said, family oriented guy. You used to looking over in the crowd. I mean, and you played college basketball in Philly, so that's all you knew was looking in the crowd, seeing your folks. And this, yeah, and, man. And this was, and this yeah. was, and people don't. You got to put it in perspective. Also, this was before social media, before Instagram, before right. smartphones. So if right. you, was, you was just out there. You, you know what I mean? Like it, it was a different way of life, different way of trying to get right. out there, man. Right. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you, bro. I'm extremely blessed to um, made the investments that I made at that time. Um, because what I did is uh, I went heavy in the real estate at that time. Wow. Wow. That's and awesome. in the same neighborhoods, bro, mm -hmm. in the same neighborhoods where you can get a house for 10000 and 12000 is worth 400000 right now. Wow. And I not know it for a fact. Wow. Philadelphia, Philadelphia is like New York. Yes, yes, yes. For so, sure. bro, when I look at what I was able to accomplish, I'm actually smiling a little yes. bit now. Yes. Not to just put people in my business, but I'm actually laughing mm -hmm. because I was able to do some things, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit of luck. Because who knew that these arees would blow up like, like this? Like they are now, of course. Yep, yep. You know, this guy said you couldn't talk to your family until after nine with Sprint. <laughs> and you know, some nights and weekends. Free Andy, you hear? Weekends. That was the deal back then. And yo, God, the <laughs> and then Sprint had a nerve to try to drop it down to seven o'clock. They exactly. crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. So, bro, so um. I played in the top league, the Euro League in, in Europe, which is the top league. Mm -hmm. um, so I made some references. To, and a couple guys got a little disgruntled when I made reference to guys going over Europe um, because it's, it's levels. Of course. It's levels. Course. So you got this guy right here, he's making 300000 and this guy right here is making 30000 uh -huh. And it's a lot of guys on the $30,000, $50,000 spectrum. Gotcha. And all I was merely saying is, if a guy wants to put his degree to use and make the same money you make in playing professional basketball, I'm not discrediting your love for the game or your career, but we have to put it in this proper perspective. You know, that, yeah, you had this long career of 12 years, but we know this is a business. He worked for SEPTA doing overtime and made more money at home than you made in in Guam or wherever you was at. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So, but but the guys took it personal, <laughs> like like you know yeah. you're trying to come at them. But I was just trying to just just let people know if just if you haven't down. been over Europe, yeah, just breaking it down. But everybody takes everything so personal, you know. Gotcha. But um. But yeah, bro, the 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 uh, overseas thing was great, but it to me it wasn't for me long term. Yeah, it wasn't for yeah. me long term. So well, at, um, at what point? At what point did you say to yourself, okay, now is now is the time for me to transition out and and not play professionally anymore? And then what was your basketball career? You know, you, did you just cold turkey, just not play at all? Just you know, how, what, what, you know, explain that transition and that closing that chapter of your life. So I said. So what ended up happening was, I built up my portfolio a little bit, right, with some really good investments. Mm -hmm. And if you can remember, what happened in two thousand and one, and nine eleven, the towers dropped. Yep. So what happened? The market crashed. Uh huh. Right. So Marvin O'Connor is making multiple six figure contracts easily at that time. After that. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm dipping in the market. I'm doing a real estate thing. You know what I mean? Yo, this guy is crazy. Um, <laughs> you tell about thank God you back because the spicy tuna is crazy. Yo, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, I, bro, I, I, I'm like, wow. I'm seeing my portfolio and my investments. So when I'm saying, bro, I'm holding on an X amount of dollars. I can really go ahead and put my degree to work. So in 05... Uh -huh. 
after playing around back and forth for three years, I just get a job working with working working with in youth detention with my degree is for. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And so, you know, that was just my thing. So I played, but basketball became an afterthought for me for the most part. You know? I mean, I'm yeah. still young, 25, yeah. I'm 26, and I still played, but it wasn't like I played with the purpose that I used yeah. to play yeah. with. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it was yeah. one of those type of things. You know what I mean? So just trying to get my 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 my, my situation and my my family and my future together. You know, one of them type of things. Gotcha. And it uh and it worked out for me, bro. So the thing is, Star, everybody's pumping the store, right? Uh, Marv opened up a store, but Star, that's my third store, Star. So they don't know that. Yeah. Because I'm not a social media guy. Gotcha. This is my third store. What's up, Tex? You know what I mean? And I've been able to. To to employ eight and ten of my friends and stuff like that, bro. It's beautiful. That's a it's thing. a beautiful hey, thing. Hey, it's hey, a beautiful man, thing. Talk, talk about that, because everyone always thinks. I mean, when you know, everybody wants to play. You know, just like like the rappers. Everybody wants to be the rapper. Everybody wants to be on the front. You know, we want to be the front man. But there's so many behind the scenes things to do, or it's like you know, for example, like with basketball, it's so many things that basketball can can get you to. Like, for yes. example, this basketball opportunity, it allowed you to build long-term opportunities and wealth for your family, the, the investment Correct. increases, you know what I'm saying? Like, it Correct. became a stepping stone for you to get to some other things. So just talk about Correct. all the different opportunities, man, that just like you said, just the business opportunities that their kids can get, that, that, that they can consider now based off of what you learned, man. Right, so here's what I tell kids. The game, so we all say that the ball stopped bouncing at some point. We, of we, we got, you know, 28, 38, 40, it's going to stop bouncing. Uh huh. Star, the resources that Marvin has in Philadelphia is retarded. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. There is nothing or nobody I can't call to get something done. No doubt. And I have rubbed elbows with so many people during my tenure with, with, with playing basketball, that basketball, I made more money for resources than basketball. Uh-huh. You understand that, you know? So, it, so it's like the people you meet along your journey is mean. It's mean. Example, five years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, I had my own medical transport company. I'm running a medical transport company. Oh, this guy's crazy. Lackey is crazy. I'm running my own medical transport company. And I'm having a, I'm having a problem um, becoming a provider for Independence Blue Cross at the time. So gotcha. I'm like, damn, how can I get in? We've submitted the application. We have issues. So I'm like, yo, the CEO of the biggest in, uh, insurance company is a saint. Yo, we gotta get him on the line. Hey, 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 Marv, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Because I can't. It's 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 a real distorted on your end. Yeah, I can hear you. How how it sound? Bad still? Yeah, no, I can I can hear you clear, but it was it was a little it was a little distorted. Now now the picture's real bad. I'm not. All right, it, it's coming back now, a little bit. Pete. You said, what's up with that Wi-Fi? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you better now, but the picture's still a little, a little, little grainy. I think we better now. We, we good now. We good? Yeah. You might want to see if you can move to a different location, but if not, this is, this, we, we, we back now, though. Okay, but can you see me? Um, it's a little choppy, and it's a little, it's a little dark a little bit. Damn, I wonder what happened. Get off that cricket, MOC. Yo, <laughs> cut it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, it's a little. I can see you, but oh, there we go. We 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 kind of back. We kind of back now. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, they coming at my. Hey, they coming at my. Hey, hey Star, you got them coming at my phone. Hey yo, this is getting out of hand, man. <laughs> it's getting out of hand. Now nah, we good. Yeah. We good now. We good now. You can continue now. We good. Yeah, yeah. So so basically, what I was saying is. I, like I said, I was operating the, the medical transport company 
Um, and I had trouble becoming a provider for Independence Blue Cross. Gotcha. So my man, like, hey, what you talking about? The the uh, the CEO at Independent Blue Cross is the St. Joe's alumni. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, get him on the line. Of course. I can't get him. He's CEO of the biggest insurance company in the world. What you talking about? Get him on the line. Yeah. I make a call. They make a call. They get him on the line. Mm-hmm. Yo, Marv, what you need? Yo, bro, I've been trying to become a provider. We can't bill you guys because you guys haven't responded to our application. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, call this lady. I'm going to send an email. And in 48 hours, bro, I'm going to provide it. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Through what? Building the round <laughs> orange basketball has allowed me to build relationships. Uh-huh. And, and, and it goes a long way. It goes a long way. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Hey, yeah. um, we we gonna we gonna wrap it up with 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 it. But I want I want to go back um and touch on a few things, and then and then we'll come back to where we are now, and then we'll wrap it up. All right? Okay. So for people for for the kids who never got a chance to see you play, one thing that you didn't talk about, you know, we just we were telling the story. Describe your game. What type of player were you? What were your strengths? You talked about shooting and all that. What were you? Was, describe your full game. What your strengths were on the court in, in high school and college. Um, well, I was a guy that could, that could really score the basketball. I, I could shoot the ball. Um, I was like a slasher. Um, and I got out in transition. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things I was able to do. And I was streaky at times. But, man, if I got hot, man, I was dangerous, man. Yeah. I was dangerous. Yeah. What were – um. Um, something, something else I'm, I'm always excited to know about. Um, during your high school days, like such as your junior and your senior year at Gratz, who were some of the big rivalries, like rivalry teams y'all went against? Um, and then some some other players, like who were some of the toughest players you had to guard um, back in them days? I mean, well, I think we all will agree that in, uh, in that 96, 97 era, that Strawberry Mansion was probably the hardest team to guard out of anybody, uh-huh. um, because we had Flip Murray and Buzzy Forney, it's just dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. Like sometimes we used to dread playing them because you <laughs> knew the niggas would try to embarrass you, man. Like, come on, man. Like, hey, Mister L, let's go to a zone this game, man. Because they, <laughs> like, y'all ain't trying to step up on none of them jokers, man. Like, come on, man. How many how many run ins did y'all have with Mansion? Well, we had uh, we played them at least once a year, and we played them in the playoffs twice. We knocked them off quite naturally both times. Yeah. But the last time we played them as a senior, me and Jared combined to have more than their whole team. Wow. At the Palestra. Wow. And Jared, he, he, Jared hangs his hat on that one. <laughs> like, yeah, me and my man beat y'all by ourselves. We ain't need nobody else. <laughs> And my man, Frost don't last. My man Keith mentioned Edison. Talk, talk about the battles with Edison. Well, Edison, it wasn't wasn't really a, a rivalry. Uh-huh. Um, Edison had one. <clears throat> Edison had one um, good season in '96 um, when he. I guess I'm gonna say they won the chip because it's on paper, but um, they had a great team with with Omar Logan and Al Crockett. Got but it wasn't really considered okay. like a rivalry. It's yeah. like more. Gratz Mansion, Gratz Franklin. Yeah. You know what I mean? You talk about the heart of North Philly. Gotcha. You ain't getting all the way down Ian Lazerne nowhere, that's for sure. Gotcha. Who who are some other guys that um you may not have dreaded going against, but there were some tough guards, some good matchups back then? So I mean, uh, you can go from top to bottom. We all talked about Lynn Greer. Uh real solid guy, not going uh pizzazz you with any speed or athleticism, but he gonna outsmart you. Mm-hmm. He gonna outsmart you. The guy was just he was beyond his years mentally before all of us. Yeah, yeah. Because he didn't have what we had athletically. Mm-hmm. So he had to use this. Of course. You know, um, so you're talking about him. Um, you want to go over and talk about uh, Crenshaw and them over there in Overbrook. Um, Bam Westcott and them down in U-City was pretty good. Um, uh, who else? I mean, bro, Damien Hill. Mm-hmm. Damien Hill was was another person that, yeah, give him a little bit of space. Because yeah. if you don't, it'll embarrass you. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So it, <laughs> it, just was, it just was crazy, bro. 
Hey, curious, is there um did you play um did you did you do after high school season was over, did you play in the Donna Frio down in Contra Hockey? Yeah. Is you crazy? So that you was a must. Me, tell me about that experience. That was a must. Yeah, I mean they you know, at that time they had the best of the best was down there. Yes, for sure. Um so like on a on a Tuesday night, seven, eight, and nine, bro. Like you, and I even went in there as a fan sometimes, just to check out the games, even before you or after you, man. Because oh, it, it's a, it's very very small, right? And people was on top of each other. Yeah. And bro, you just went at it. Yeah. I mean, Kobe's in there, Donnie's in there, Arthur Davis is in there, Shaheen Holloway, the guys are road runners, guys coming over from Jersey, uh. Like, Chris crazy. Yeah, who, crazy, who, did, you play, who did you play with? Um, who, who were some of your teammates down there? And who do you remember? I played, uh, I played with Point Breeze. I played with a South Philly squad down there. And it, it was Donnie Carr. Yeah, this is the only time I've ever played with Donnie Carr and Yah Davis. Because I realized I, it was only you one. Was on, you, only, you was on the, the Donnie Field squad with Donnie and Yah? Yeah, that's when I realized, bro, it was only one basketball, and I would never play with them again, ever. <laughs> hey, bro, crazy. Wow. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. yeah, but it was, um, like I said, bro, it was the best of the best. Best crazy. of the best. Crazy, man. Hey, what, right. um, is there anybody you remember, um, from back then that, that, that never made it out of the playgrounds in South Philly, guys that were just dynamite and outstanding, that never, you know, their career just ended there. They, they didn't go to college, didn't go to the pros, but they were just like legendary and they were just legendary only in the hood? Um, I would say, you know, I'm gonna throw Abdul Taylor name out there. Um, because not they were just legendary in the hood because Abdul Teller led the public league in scoring as well. Gotcha. Um, but I think because his size, he never really got a chance to really make some real noise other than locally. Gotcha. Um, and unfortunately, uh, maybe about five, six years ago, he lost his life. Oh. But he, yeah, so he, he really... Him and Robbie Sedan put Rick, uh, Orton Reed on the map at that time. Okay. And and like I said, this guy, Abdul Teller, was scoring at will. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's a guy that I would like to see play against, like, some better competition on a national scale, but wasn't able to – wasn't really able to do it. Got you, got you, got you. Gosh, hey, curious. So, just um, just reflect on on your overall basketball journey, man. What are what are some things that your that your journey? Um, I mean, because your, your journey is amazing. You, you you're you're a hundred percent a success. Um, you took your bas you you have fun. You you, know, you played at levels. You, you accomplished things that that will never be accomplished ever again. You allow you allowed the game to get you to somewhere else. You're a professional now, taking care of your family. You've had an amazing career, and you're 100 percent a success. So, but but you know, you, it's a it's a different journey. You know what I mean? It's, oh yeah, it's your lane, it's your journey. But what has your journey taught you overall, man? What, what have you learned about life, about yourself, and just you know, just anything in general? Well, one of the things that um, my journey has taught me is to have some patience, um, and the biggest thing is that your journey is yours. Mm -hmm. And to not take a peek at somebody else's journey or what somebody else is doing and thrive off somebody else, what they're doing, because that may not be for you. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking to the kids, and I tell parents this as well, that yeah, you're looking at this guy over here, he's 12, he got in and out, double cross behind the back, through his <laughs> neck, and all like that. And you looking at him because your kid can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But it's not it's not fair. It's not fair to your child because his journey will be different. Of course, of course. You know, and, and that's what I picked up by playing the game, by having patience, by being cut, mm -hmm. by sitting on the bench, by trans by sitting on the bench at Nova, by transferring. Because I had my highs and my lows, bro. And yeah. they always been up here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But um, and it teaches you it's a character, bro. And in, in life, how to weather the storm. I mean, we all have some issues, and it's 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 mean, bro. With yeah. with, with the game has allowed me to do. 
Yeah. When you when you look back over your career as well, are there any things? Not I don't I don't like to use the word regrets because I believe everything happens for a reason. But are there any things that you wish you could have done differently if you if you had a chance to do over regarding your basketball career? Well, it's only one thing if if I had to do over, I would probably work on being more of a point guard with my size mm -hmm. than a shoot than a two guard. Okay. Early. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Which would allow me, which would expand in, expand it, you know, my horizon a little bit, give me different chances to do different things. I pigeonhole myself a little bit by playing on the wing so much. Gotcha. That that was my comfort zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so with one thing is I said damn maybe I would have handled the ball a little bit more younger mm -hmm. instead of Knowing I can score and just like staying in my comfort zone. Gotcha. You know, yeah. yeah. I appreciate What's that. What's up, baby? Man. Hey, hey. Well, um, I just want to um thank you, man. I want to I want to uh, give a shout out to the people, man. Shout out to everybody that's been tuned in. You know, listening to the legendary Legends Week Marvel Connor story, man. Um, uh, Marv, I just have like one or two more questions, and I'm gonna turn them sure. to the people. Let them, you know, have a have a little dialogue with uh, dialogue with you. So, people. Um, right now, start typing your questions at the bottom of the screen. You know, Marv, he's he's in tune. He's reading all the information down there. Start asking Marv some questions, man, and I'm going to you know, just let Marv dialogue with the people. So last thing, Marv, um, I just have for you, um, give some advice to some younger players. There's, there's some young younger players watching this right now, man, that are going to, you know, watching this now, hear your story afterwards on YouTube or something like that. Give them some direct advice, um, some things that, you know, they, they, they may have heard before, may, may not have heard, but just some keys to success or just anything in general regarding, regarding basketball basketball, academics, whatever. Right. Well, one of the things I want to say, you know, from a basketball perspective is, is um, I encourage to have the kids to have all some level of, of, of perseverance. Because if you don't, when you run into these roadblocks or you run into these obstacles, that's when we tend to quit or tend to go in other directions. Mm -hmm. um, nothing's going to be handed to you. So, you welcome, welcome that. Welcome them storms. Um, because like I just said, everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. And if I could tell them anything, it's to kind of hang in there when things are rough. Because um, like I said, I, I've been through it, bro. I mean, Villanova had me not even liking basketball. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I had to find myself again. Mm -hmm. I had to find myself again. So just keep pushing. You know, you're going to have your moments. You're going to have your moments, but keep pushing, man. No doubt, no doubt. Well, hey, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you so much. Like I said at the top of the hours, man, I appreciate your time. You know, appreciate the dialogue. Appreciate you, man. No doubt. <laughs> hey, start real quick, man. One thing, you know, you come from my era, bro. Um, I appreciate what you're doing, and I just encourage you as well to keep doing what you doing. Because what you're doing is phenomenal, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, bro, <laughs> Thank you. it's phenomenal, bro. It's different. Yes. It's just not regular. It's not what I see from, from people. It, you, what you're doing is all positive, all for the kids. Even what you're doing with us is not really for me. I'm 41. No doubt. It's for, it's for somebody else. No doubt. <laughs> bro, did you hear that, young man? You heard that what he said? You heard what Al Williams said? You heard what Mark Jackson said? You heard what Flip Murray said? Keep doing what you're doing. It's very inspirational, and you big time, bro. Thank you. You big man. time. That means a lot to me, man. Thank you so much. I can't I can't thank you enough, man. Um, sure. And, you know, and just like I said at the top of the hours, thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, help to solidify your legacy. I never want the basketball community in Pennsylvania to forget Marvin O'Connor. And Appreciate that, bro. Opportunity for the younger generation, just like you said, who may not know who you know Mr. O'Connor is. You know what I'm saying? Right. To be like, oh man, that's the guy. That's that's the guy who my dad was talking about. So just educating the kids, man. So thanks. I I can't thank you enough, man. Appreciate you, my man. My, always, always. Yeah, man. All right, so people, now it's y'all turn. I see I got my man. Um, frauds don't last. I got Keith on here. My man J Mac. Um, my man James Nelson Stewart. All the good question askers. Um, so first question comes from um Keith two nineteen. Um, top five you ever saw come out of Philly uh, in any era, like like a all, like a, uh, all eras team over all, the last fifty years. Um, well that I that I saw. Um, I'm gonna go with a. I'm gonna go with a Rashi Wallace. 
uh, I'm going to go with a, if I was young, I'm going to go with a Pooh Richardson. Um, I'm going to go with a Kareem Towns. I'm going to go with a Lionel Simmons. Ah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. This, this is, is tough. <laughs> Damn. I'm a five. I'm a five. It's killing me right now. Mm. I'm stuck right there, man. I'm stuck. <laughs> no, you want to leave it there? You just want to leave it at that? Damn. I saw. You know what? I'm going to put somebody from my era in that joint, man. Now, I'm going to go with a Ronald Murray, man. No doubt. I'm going to go with a Ronald Murray. I respect the guy who came from the street and went to D2 and went to the NBA. I respect that kind of journey. I respect it. 100%. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, my man, uh, uh, Fadance 2024 said, talk about the hecklers you had uh, to face in, in South Philly. <laughs> hey, man, hey, listen. So it was crazy because I'm from South Philly. Yeah. But, but they was giving me hell, bro. For real. Bro, that's why, I, man, I say I'm going up North Philly. I, no, no, no exaggeration. My legacy is bigger up North Philly than it is in South. Wow, that's interesting. Wow. And that's just to be honest, man. They was giving me hell for – it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, they, they love the Donnies and the Rasuls because we're from a different part of South Philly. Got you. You know what I mean? But they gave they – gave, they, yeah, it was, oh, God. It was bad, bro. That's crazy. Hey, I'm curious to know um, – you know, we heard about the the the, the uh, eighteen points and fifty, you know, fifty something seconds in college. But during your high school years at Gratz, what was some showtime? So tell me about one of your most craziest like showtime moments. Just had the crowd going crazy. Just something you remember? Something that people may still talk about today in the barbershop. So I think my my biggest game, probably in the city, is probably against Frankfurt. Frankfurt mm -hmm. came in. Frankfurt came in with Yad Davis. Ronnie Conway and them guys transferred over from Roman Catholic to Frankfurt, mm -hmm. and they already had a nice nucleus there already. Gotcha. So the, the days before leading up to it's a big part of the city said, y'all ain't going to better beat them. Gotcha. But, but, but Marv and Jared had something to say about that. Of course. And I ain't going to lie, the game was early at 11 a.m. at the Civic Center, bro. Wow. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, and I put on. I, I came to play, bro. No doubt. <laughs> I came to play. Actually, me and Donnie Carr was talking about that the other day. He said, bro, yo, you was out there doing you, bro. <laughs> Crazy. That's what's up. Hey, uh, a thinking question. Um, What do you – I mean, you, you transferred. Um, I talked to, you know, Mark Jackson the other day. You know, Mark Jackson had a transfer experience. What do you think about – you know, have you heard about the, the, you know, the big phenomenon with the whole transfer portal and guys are transferring all over the place? Even guys that are having some success where they are, they're transferring. Like, what do you think about just the transfer portal in college and just everybody – everybody's everywhere. Nobody's, like, nowhere. But everybody's everywhere, just all over the place. Well, I would be a big hypocrite, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to say – to tell somebody not to transfer. Mm -hmm. I also, I'm also big in allowing somebody's error to be their error. Mm -hmm. I can't, I will be fired to enforce our, our rules and morals and values of yesteryear on this group of people. Mm -hmm. That is not cool. Gotcha. That's not cool. So if it, my thing is, if that's the thing mm -hmm. and it works for you, then do it. Gotcha. Now, but we can't go back and say, well, we're in 94. I would have never did that. Well, it ain't 94. And no that's doubt. not, and that's not, that's not okay. That's not okay to do that. Yeah. And I had a, I had a borderline argument with somebody about our year and trying to enforce our years on somebody else. Got that, that's not, that's not cool. Okay. You got to allow their error. When we was driving down the street listening to NWA and Snoop Dogg, your mom didn't like that. <laughs> Because that was our era. No doubt. She ain't wasn't listening to Wu-Tang Clan, was she? Uh -huh. But that was our era. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a respect thing, bro. Got you. Don't mean I agree with it, though. I got you. Um, my man, uh, Tunnel Vision 67, wants to know um, top five players or some players that you like right now. 
if you if you if you get if you get out to any games or you know what kids may be on your radar if you pay attention to the high school hoop scene right now. Um. Damn. <laughs> so quite naturally, the big kid at Rome, well, formerly at Roman. Yeah, formerly. Yeah. Um, I just you know I respect his uh, his size and his athleticism. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. I like I like Sam Sessions a lot in the way he go about his business. Mm -hmm. I like Wooga. Yeah. I like Wooga, freak of nature, athletic. Super freak. Um, yeah, young boy's tough. Once he, yeah, once he fine tuned some of his other stuff, he'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. Here, pa be pa just pause there one second. So imagine if you know Wooga was watching you know you based off of who you are, um, your knowledge for the game, your eye for the game. What advice would you give to a player like him who's just a freak, like a little, you know, freak of, like a, a athletically gifted, and, and then and then helping him to fine tune this last year and transition into college? What advice would you give him for his game? One thing, bro, one thing that's going to be very key because what he's going to run up against is when, when he goes to wherever he goes, everybody was wooga on their team. Mm-hmm. Wooga has to become more of a knockdown shooter than he is. Gotcha. If he shoots the ball at a high clip, his ceiling is very high. Gotcha. If he tries to use his athleticism only, he's going. It, it won't work because you had six eleven back there. See, I understand that it's going to change. Mm -hmm. So if he shoots the ball and shoots it at a high clip and shoots it well, he, he's going to be good. And I, and I also like Justice Williams, too. Yep. Justice is a very good young young player. Very solid. Very smooth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no doubt. He has no facial expressions at all. He just, <laughs> damn, I ain't seen a guy that smooth in a long time, bro. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Very, very talented. No doubt. Very skilled. For sure. Um, my man, um, James Nelson Stewart wants to know your t oh man, oh man, they put you to the test, Marv. Oh, this this gonna be tough. Top five grass players uh, in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah. damn. <laughs> well, how about this? I gotta start at ninety with Aaron McKee. Okay, that's one. Rashid Wallace, no brainer. No brainer, yeah. Oh God, I man. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say this, bro. I'm, I'm number three scoring all time in grads. I'm gonna throw myself in there. <laughs> Why not, <laughs> bro? And, and bro, that's some two and a half seasons, bro. Pretty much, I, I got to throw myself in there. No doubt. Um. I'm going to say, I'm going to go Terrell Stokes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. This guy going to be mad at me, man. <laughs> I don't even really want that. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say Lenard Stewart. It's, so, it's, it's, it's too close, bro. I'm going to say Lenard Stewart. I'm going to say no, Lenard. It's all good. It ain't no person. It's, it's just, it's just, you know, because, you know, it, Top five, I mean. It's yeah, because if I say my backcourt mate, they're going to say you only said that because you played with them. It's, just so, so, it's so tough, bro. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, well, before we uh, tune out, man, is there anything else that you want to say? To, um, is there anything, any other story you want to tell? Just anything else you want to mention? Any shout-outs, anything before we close out? No, I just want to say um, just a shout-out to guys who have took the time out especially the guys that, that's not from South Philly and don't live down there or frequently down there that regularly come and spend money with me, bro. And when I look out the window and I see guys who travel 30 minutes for one sandwich, it's, it's real love, man. And it's true love. You pass, you pass 40 stores just to come to mine and show love, man. And I, and I am super appreciative of, the love that Philadelphia has shown me on and off the floor, man. And that's something that I, I wanted to, you know, say, you know, how much, you know, I appreciate guys, man. No doubt. Hey, that's a great um, uh, outro. 
Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the things that I wanted to touch on. Um, shout out to my sponsor. This is a sponsor moment. Shout out to my sponsor, Marv O'Connor. So real quick, tell the people about your, your, your current, you know, you've had tons of stores in the past. Tell the people about your current venture that's shocking the nation, got Philadelphia going crazy. Like talk to the people, give them the address, let them know where you are, let them know your specialty and just, just break it down, man. Talk to the people, man. Well, bro, yeah, I got the new spot. Been open up for about three months now on uh, South Philly, man. Um, it's like a Pat's and Gino style steak place. Um, so we got, so we we down here fighting with 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 with, with, with the big dogs when you're talking about steaks. Um, we offer, in my opinion, the best steak in Philadelphia. We have mm. the freshest, the freshest bread in Philadelphia. Wow. And and we all know the roll makes the steak. No doubt. So we offer the freshest rolls. Um, we have a, a mural up there with South Philly legends up there. And it's just a, a, a South Philly flavor, man. You got to come down and, and, and check it out, man. Is it, it's what, really what's special. The, what, what's, what's the address? Or is, is, is uh, it's uh, 2101 Reed truck? Street. With... Huh? No, is, is it a storefront? Is it a food truck or what? No, it's a, it's a storefront. It sits on an island all by itself. Oh, wow. It's a walk up to the window. Um, you order at the window, pick up at the other window. Um, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Like I said, the front of it, we're ready to add another mural. I can't tell you who's on it. Um, not on this because people, it's crazy. It's but we're going to add another it. South Philly Legends mural. It, it, it's a, bro, it's like um, for the community, bro. When, when you, when people come to the works, especially the people that's from that area, it's like, it's like they treat it like it's theirs. Mm-hmm. That's like this is ours. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're, this is people, ours. People ask me, what's the address again? Keep saying the address. It's a it's a 2101 Reed Street. R-E-E-D. 2101 Reed. R-E-E-D. Gotcha. Reed Street is on a uh right on the corner of Point Breeze and Reed. You and, can't miss it. And it's called the works. Yes. Wow. Hey, so I'm I'm standing in front of the works. I want to leave this place with my mind blown. What am I going to order? What, what, what's a couple couple things on the menu? And then break them down. What? And hold, oh, oh, before you do that, are you behind the scenes, Mark? Are you, are you back? Well, I get busy, bro. I just don't shoot jump shots from the baseline, bro. I just don't shoot jump shots. I get busy. <laughs> I get busy. Because one of the things was, Star, I said, man, I need to learn my own business in case guys want to walk up out of here. I need to know how to do this. No doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, so, and plus, it ain't been nothing else to do for the past 90 days but work. No, no. I've been able to bless to be able to work and some people lost their jobs and, and can't pay their mortgage, bro. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, I man, extremely appreciative. Hey, so I'm what, back there getting busy. Hey, what, what, I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to type the address in. What is it again? 20? 20... 2101 Reed Street. R-E-E-D. 19146. Got you. Got you. All right. Hey, we got um one minute left. Um, what's the, what's the uh, what, what's one of the best steaks? Um, it, it, you said at the top of the hour. What's one of the best steaks? One of the best orders on the menu. Some of your favorites. Well, we all, yeah. Well, I think our, our fan favorite is this, is the Rasu Butler combo, bro. It's a buffalo chicken cheese steak with the waffle fry to go with it, and the flavor of the buffalo sauce and the combination with the bread is retarded. No doubt. <laughs> no it's retarded. And it's not one of them sauces that's that's dumb hot. Because I don't like something that's super hot. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's good. No it's doubt. It's good. No doubt. Well, hey, we're we going to end it right there, man. I'll be down there to see My man. you, God willing. Um, all the people right now watching, make sure y'all go down there and support my man, Marvel Connor. Tell him Big Star sent you. Tell him i seen you on Legends Week. I'm here for the works. And it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Star. I appreciate you, bro. And like I said, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Building up our communities, man. It means it means everything. No doubt. And I, I'll be getting at you to help me uh, link up with some more legends too. So I'll be I'll be got you. Yeah, time. I got plenty of phone numbers for you, bro. Done deal. And one last thing. All right. This this interview, um, I'm gonna upload it to YouTube and I'll send you the link. So this interview is gonna be out there forever. Got you, bro. Appreciate you again. Appreciate you, Mar. All right, be good, bro. Talk be to good. you soon. Yes, sir.